All right, guys, I'm Big Mike, and like always, I'd like to thank you for being here today. Today we've got uh, Tyler Yell from FXCM, and he's here to talk about building an edge in the spot forex market. Uh, this webinar is actually the last webinar of our month-long four-year anniversary, and we've got two very special prizes today. The uh, Google, Google Nexus 7 tablet and an autographed copy of sentiment in the forex market. So pay close attention to the uh, content covered today by Tyler. And at the end of the presentation, we'll be going over that. Uh, guys, give me one second. I'm going to turn things over to Tyler. All right, Tyler, you should have the option to share your screen. You see it. Perfect. Perfect. Well, welcome, everybody, to the Art of Contrary Trading to Build an Edge in Forex Trading. My name is Tyler Gell with FXCM. It's a pleasure to be here, and I hope at the end of today's session uh, you all take some time to thank Mike for this, this wonderful litany of presenters that he's put together, uh, the least of which is myself. Uh, so we are thrilled to have you here, and we do have some great prizes at the end of today's session. Uh, so i uh, kind of give you the punchline up front, as you can see there with the title slide, uh, that we are going to be talking about contrary trading to build an edge. We have a very specific tool that I'll explain uh, from A to Z uh, on how to use. But before we do get started, I want to run a quick risk disclaimer on the screen stating actually that trading foreign exchange on margin carries a high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors. High degree of leverage can work against you as well as for you. We will be discussing strategy. So next, again, this is just a quick bit of housekeeping, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to say the past performance is not indicative of future results. We're going to look at some major moves in which, unfortunately, the crowd I say unfortunately, but uh, as you'll see, you'll, you'll learn how to use this information to build an edge in your own trading, something that we all use very heavily here at FXCM and Daily FX. Uh, but you're going to see some massive trends in which the crowd really has been on the wrong side the entire time. Uh, so uh, all that to say, we're going to look at some massive trends, but I must state that past performance is not indicative of future results. Uh, and then lastly, let me show you before we get started. Uh, this is myself with my contact information. I want to make sure everybody has my email address. Uh, you're always welcome to reach out to me. Uh, and I show you this uh, mainly to say I'm a friendly guy. Don't, <laughs> don't worry. I won't bite. We're going to take questions in real time. So I want to invite you to ask questions as we go through. Uh, when the questions do start to build up, Mike will pause myself and we'll take some questions in real time. Then actually at the end before we get to the prize questions, or the little contest at the end, uh, we'll definitely take the rest of the questions then. All right, so let's get on with the show, the reason why we are all here. And again, it is a pleasure to speak with all of you today. Okay, so the big idea that we're talking about, again, is sentiment trading. And naturally, the first thing people want to know is, is why. why. Why spend my time here today learning about this concept? How is it going to build an edge? Well, quite simply, there's a few fundamental things that I want you to grasp onto. And again, it's, it's based on kind of a sad reality when taken at face value. And that, and that is that majority of traders often lose. And not only that, and some of you may have heard your own statistics. We, we've actually compiled our own statistics here at FXCM. Uh, but some have heard that it's as much as 90%. Uh, our, our data shows it's more in the uh, roughly the 60% range. But all that to say, what we see is that the majority of traders will either try and buy low and sell high, which as you can see there, and the second point, why traders often lose in the long run, uh, buy low and sell high is, is a cute cliche, but it's very ineffective when it comes to trading. Uh, but what we've noticed over the years is that traders often close out profitable trades very quickly, but they will hold on to a losing trade and even add on to a losing trade trying to break even, and we'll talk about that fallacy here in a bit. Uh, but again, the big idea on sentiment trading is that if we can understand the overall positioning of retail traders, which is really what this is focused on, 
different than the COT, which we'll talk about in just a second. But if we can understand the net positioning of the retail crowd, that immediately gives us a bias for trading, and that's what's important. So as you, as you can see to the next point down, it's going to help you spot breakouts at key tipping points in the market. And when I say key tipping points in the market, essentially what we're looking at is the fact that, excuse me, got a little bit ahead of myself, uh, is the fact that often traders will build up a position at, uh, and a majority of traders, and we have specific ways to show you how many traders are on one side of the trade. And, and again, just to kind of give you the punchline up front, I'm just going to switch to a chart here real quick just to kind of give you a visual so that, so that this can be kind of marinating in your mind as we talk about and kind of build up the argument. Uh, traders often build up a position around key turning points and it's often against their best interest. What I mean by that is this line here, you're going to see on my chart, this vertical line. Anytime you see a vertical line on my chart, it's showing a sentiment shift. So on May 1st, our traders, our retail traders, were net long Aussie dollar. As you can see, that's a very, very, very painful move. In fact, we hit a multi, multi-year low this morning, and traders have stayed net long. So again, what I want you to grasp with this concept and what we're talking about today is that FXCM provides you a tool to see the net retail positioning on a massive scale with spot forex, which is which is pretty much unavailable in this market, in the spot forex market. And that's why we're so thrilled to offer this to you and explain to you how this works. Go back to the slides briefly. Okay, and then also what I like about it, it's very easy to team up with other indicators, which is naturally what I'm going to show you as well. So again, the key points, what we want to start off with is that we are looking at fading the losing majority, also known as the crowd. We're going to find key entries when there is an extreme of sentiment because that's when there's often that, that watershed effect in trading that we definitely want to be on the right side of. And again, this tool helps you see that, like we just saw with the Australian dollar. And I'm going to expand on that a little bit. Now, many of you are probably familiar with the COT, also known as the Commitment of Traders put out by the CME. Uh, the main difference that we're going to look at here uh, and some of the key points of the COT is that it's giving you certain groups and their position, non-commercial, commercial. So if you're looking at commodities and you want to see uh, how Monsanto is hedged or, or, or some of those big players are hedged uh, that have a commercial interest, you can also naturally uh, see the non-reportable positions. All that to say, there's a lot of parameters here and there's very few parameters that we look at with our sentiment tool. We're going to dig into that. But what's nice and what I want you to grab onto is the COT, it is valuable. And I'm not telling anybody to leave that behind. But for spot FX traders, our sentiment tool, known as the Speculative Sentiment Index, has a few very key advantages. And that's what we're going to talk about next. Uh, some of those very key advantages, so we're talking about the Speculative Sentiment Index, and I'll, I'll refer to it in and out as the SSI, as an improved sentiment tool, because like I mentioned earlier, the COT, the Commitment of Traders, put out once a week. It's put out on Tuesday. And what we offer is a twice-a-day report to show you the positioning of retail Forex traders. Now, the reason why that's helpful for a lot of traders is because FXCM is one of the largest non-bank forex dealers. So we really have the ability to take information from a decentralized market like foreign exchange and help you find that data that most traders simply do not have so that you're not just relying on technical and fundamental data. Because why that's helpful, I often find that sentiment especially with my trading and the trading of some of the other strategists here and our clients, and as you'll see even further on today's presentation, we have automated strategies built around sentiment because we believe in it so much. But I really feel like it's that third leg of the tripod missing on most people's strategy in the spot forex market. So that's what we're looking at. So when we look at this SSI tool that we have here, again, from FXCM, one of the largest non-bank forex dealers, 
we're helping you build that edge. And in fact, I'm going to give you some metaphors to kind of understand what we're looking at here today with the SSI and, and why we're using it really as a crux of a trading indicator and a trading tool. Uh, so A, yes, it is updated twice a day. Uh, we do give positioning data on retail Forex and some specific CFD trades like gold and the S&P. Uh, the boost that it provides to your sentiment or to your spot strategy is some of what we talked about earlier. And, and what I want to share with you is something we kind of call the riverboat metaphor. And essentially that's if, if you and your closest friends, let's say, uh, let's say 50 of you are on, a, are on a small riverboat and you're out for a party, you guys are all having a good time, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden somebody says, oh my gosh, look at that fish, everybody runs to one side of the boat, well, suddenly that boat tips and then recorrects. Well, it's, it's that type of moment in the market that that tipping point so to speak that we want to see ahead of time and that's why it really provides a boost to your trading uh, you see there I, I mentioned next that sentiment trading can help prevent you from the mistake that is as old as the hills in trading and that's attempting to buy the bottom and sell the top now in my webinars that I do with daily facts throughout the week I often say that that's one of the the, the unknown curses from our childhood is when we hear about the stock market, we think about buying low and selling high. And, and especially, especially in the spot forex market where you have two monster economies pitted against each other and economies can get into a determined direction for a period of time, you see these monster trends. So buying low and selling high often just does not play out like you anticipate it to. Uh, in fact, when when we break out to new highs, it's often for a reason. It can often sustain itself much longer than you think it should, or as I'll state later, and quoting Keynes, much longer than you can stay solvent. Now, next, you see that I post this as the thinking trader's indicator. I tell you, it is, it is much more simple to use than many other indicators. Uh, it's, it's not like Elliott Wave, even though I think that's extremely valuable in which you have to know tons of rules and have to have uh, your primary counts and alternate counts. Uh, but the reason why I call it the thinking trader's indicator, even though it's quite simple, is because I want you to kind of think uh, forward in time. And again, if you want to use that, that riverboat analogy uh, to kind of give you a base, what we're, what we're doing here is we're really looking into the future. And what I mean by that, and actually let me pull up the Australian dollar one more time. So at this point, we had traders getting net long. On May 1st, our traders started going net long. And essentially, they were thinking that they were going to break out into new highs back above that 106, 107 level, which if I scroll out even further, which I'd be happy to do, I'm just going to pull up a daily chart. You saw we had this range going on here that they were hoping to break out to the upside. Let me go back to the prior view where we were. Well, at this point, we started to move down to the bottom of the range, and naturally the traders started to think, okay, we're at the bottom of the range, let me start buying. Well, because we had access to this data, which I'll explain this in just a moment, but really takes on almost 80,000 live accounts or actively trading accounts worth of data, we were able to see very easily, okay, the retail crowd is long, so we want to be looking for breakouts to the downside. Even though just using standard technical analysis, so to speak, naturally you're going to be uh, looking to buy the bottom of the range. But that's why this is extremely valuable. It's because instead of sitting here trying to buy this, we had our entry orders right below this low. And as you can see, it just started to fall and fall further. And what was very interesting for us is as this fell further and further and further, so from 102.50 down to 101, and then down to one even, traders were building up their long positions. And because we could see that, almost giving us kind of x-ray vision into the market, we knew, not because we, we necessarily knew what the future price was going to be, but because we know just the history of how traders perform and that they often keep on trying to buy in a falling market or sell in a rising market that we wanted to be against that crowd. So I call this the thinking traders indicator for the very simple reason that you have to think into the future 
as what must happen when traders with finite capital are overloaded in a trade that is losing. Quite simply, naturally, these positions that they've built up, either they get stopped out, they get a margin call, they hit their uncle point and says, that's enough. But they have to get out of their position. So these buy positions turn into a sell position, and you see these pulls to the downside. And it's been an amazing run. If I just pull up this ruler here, about 1,100 pips, or actually, excuse me, about 1,250 pips since traders went net long. Now, chances are you wouldn't have been short the entire time. You may have been in and out taking profits. But what we're looking at here is that when you have that gauge of traders being net long on the retail side, you only want to be looking for short trades. And I'm going to, I'm going to clean up that argument as we go on, but that's the gist of it. So again, that thinking person's indicator, is the, or the thinking trader's indicator, is understanding the fact that trading capital is finite, but markets are not. And we'll touch on that again uh, in just a moment. So what does the SSI look like? I know that's what many of you are asking right now. Let me pull up how you would see it on our website. Uh, essentially, what we're going to show you is positioning on a ratio basis, so a positioning ratio. And you see here some of the major currency pairs and CFDs that we show you this positioning on. Again, this is updated twice a day. And there's two things naturally we want to look at. We want to look at A, the positioning, and then B, the open interest. And that helps you really gauge how quickly could this, could this tip if there's so much on one side of the boat, again, using that analogy. But let me show you how to read this here. So at the top, you see positioning. You see the Euro USD is at minus 1.27. Not a very strong reading, and I'll kind of give you the filter of when you really want to engage and start using this tool. But what this is telling you is that 1.27 retail traders are short for every one that is long. Really what we want to look at is once we get past 1.5, that's kind of our trigger. Two is better, three is even better than two, and really so on and so forth. As you get a higher reading, the more so you want to really grab on and find a technical signal to fade the majority. So let me, do, let me state up front, and again, if you've sat in on any of my webinars before, uh, I, I really want to give you the entire secret sauce recipe. I don't want to hide anything, but what I, what I very clearly want to state is that this is not a timing indicator. For that, there are a litany of wonderful technical analysis tools, many of which you've heard how to use over this month with these great speakers that Mike has lined up for you. But what this is doing is giving you that green light, so to speak, or that red light. Uh, if, if, if you're trying to trade with the crowd, uh, you're going to want to hold off. So let's read this. We have gold, and actually I'll pull up a chart of gold in just a moment. You see that there are 1.97 traders long for every one that is short, or essentially two that are long for every one that is short. So as gold dropped below, just about a week ago, below 1,300, and then today, I think this morning, uh, it was around the 1190 area before popping back up. In fact, let me pull up the gold chart. Naturally, a lot of stops are getting triggered. A lot of people are liquidating. You have central banks that are very heavily long gold. And, and traders are just having to get out of this position because, again, money is finite. And as they have to exit these positions, there is almost that panic selling. Everybody's running to the door at the exact same time. So here you see at the bottom, I, I just showed exactly what we saw on the SSI reading, in which it was the ratio of long to short positions was at 1.97 positive. So 66% traders essentially are long. So as we hit these, and, and what I just have here, ladies and gentlemen, is a very simple daunting channel. Uh, we're going to talk about some strategies or technical indicators you can look at to really take advantage of this. But as we break these levels, it often breaks fast. And especially that's been the case with gold. 
Another another word that I often or another phrase I use for this tool, the speculative sentiment index, or the SSI, is I sometimes call it the this thing can't go another pip lower indicator. And, and definitely traders, just again pulling up the Aussie dollar chart, definitely traders who are long there, that's why they load into the positions, albeit to their own demise. But aggressively, they were going long because they're thinking this thing cannot go another pip lower. And that's what we want to guard against. And that's, again, why we call it the thinking person's indicator. It's, it, it's a sad fact that historically retail traders do try to fade momentum or fade the trend by picking tops and bottoms. And that's what we want to avoid, and that's why this tool is so valuable. Okay, so now we're going to dig a little bit deeper into the tool. So again, this is how it is displayed. This essentially is what we're looking at here. And again, that 1.5 point, that's the trigger. That's really where we are trying to get a feel for is there an edge here that I can exploit. If it's, if it's writing, writing that one line, and just so you know, when reading this tool, it's never going to be zero point fill in the blank. It's always going to be 1.01 .01 positive, negative, or greater. But that 1.5 is really what we want to find to build an edge when trading. So here you see Euro USD 1.27, 1.97 gold. So that's that's worth looking for a new time to enter a short trade. Here we have dollar yen, 1.84, same thing. Looking for a new time to enter a short trade. Obviously, Aussie dollar almost at three times as many longs as one short. So we want to look for signals to enter the sell trade. And this, this, data, is, this data is as recent as the end of the London session this morning, so around 11 a.m. Eastern. Okay, and this is a quote from Chaminard Keynes uh, that, again, I think is extremely important because it's what causes those huge moves in the market most often, is markets can remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. So essentially, traders often will build up to that point, but they can't hold a trade any longer, and then they must let go. And they often let go collectively because, ladies and gentlemen, often they're all looking around the same level. They're often all using Fibonacci levels, or they're all using standard support and resistance, or trend lines, or something very simple of that nature, or a moving average. So when they all build up there, and then price moves down, well, that's our key. When they're adding into their buy positions because they're showing a loss and they're afraid to book that loss, that's when we want to be looking to sell, like we see on the Aussie US dollar, and some other trades that we're going to look at in just a second. Okay, so next we're going to look at how and why sentiment changes. And, and naturally, as you can imagine, it's because there's uh, almost a collective group think in the market that starts to shift. Most recently, last week, we had the FOMC meeting in which, I'll tell you, this, this had, to, had to baffle the members of the Fed uh, because the rhetoric hadn't changed much, but essentially what happened is what was thought as impossible became inevitable and, and, and that thinking overtook and then you saw stocks sell off you saw the dollar strengthen as they thought you know what eventually eventually they're gonna have to end life support also known as QE so sentiment changes naturally when 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 macro events start to take place but as you'll see here and kinda of what I state down here even though it's driven by fundamentals, once it does make that shift, they can often be overdramatic, and that's what causes those major price swings that we want to be aware of. One thing that I often state, and I believe full, full heartedly, is that the human brain is not wired to understand probability very well. I often say that we're essentially at a disadvantage probabilist, probabilistically in trading. And what I mean by that is we are particularly bad 
at understanding low probability events, which we, again, kind of think of as in inevitable or impossible. But then, when that small change happens, the wording in Bernanke's minutes, make that small change, those wild swings in sentiment happen. So something goes from inevitable or from impossible to inevitable, even though the fundamentals do not change. And that's when that sentiment moves and that's when the markets really start to really start to gear up. And that's what we want to be really, really on the cutting edge of, and that's why we do want to update this twice a day. That's why we take all of the data from our client base, which again, derived over 150,000 accounts, about 80,000 of them are trading. And we want to bring that to you so you kind of have that vision of what could happen should we get a breakout. So this is another way to look at it. This is Aussie USD. And again, that sad fact uh, that traders were net long Aussie USD as it plummeted from 102.50, actually a little bit higher, uh, but they really, they really started to gear up their long positions around this 102.50 level, all the way down to this morning's print of, I think it was actually lower than 91.30. I updated that this morning, and then I think it hit 91.15. But as you can see here, we have the green line, which is representing price, and then back here, this chart is showing positioning. So May 1st is when they went fully net long. You see it was even earlier in April when it was the majority long, but the full switch to net long happened as it broke below that 102.50 level, and they've stayed there since. So that's just another view of the retail sentiment. Another thing we do like to look at, which I think is important, is shifts in sentiment. The reason why we look at shifts in sentiment is because it's helpful to know when extremes start lightening up. Like one thing, definitely important to know. Uh, in fact, let me see if I can pull up a chart here on Aussie yen. Uh, two, two that have been very, very, uh, very one-sided on the SSI readings. Aussie yen going back to late May had an SSI rating of positive 19, whereas 19 traders were long for every one short. And you can see it was holding up, and then it, it fell out of bed. We throw that vertical line right there towards the end of May. So I'm sure there was many traders who were taught to draw trend lines. And they had their trend line drawn up here. And as price hit here, they wanted to buy again because they thought, surely we know what's happening in Japan. We know Abenomics and, and their, their full-fledged promise to weaken the yen. So I'm going to make sure to buy all I can. Well, as you can see here, that did not amount to a hill of beans when it dropped through and sentiment was that extreme. And again, it's not that there's anything that the market obeys about the sentiment. It's just understanding that key fact that traders so often try and buy at the best times to sell, and so often try to sell at the best times to buy. So if you know that information, you can take very clear advantage of it. Uh, but So you see the sentiment shift, and then it dropped almost 1,000 pips in a few weeks. The other trade, there's been a very, very, very strong shift on, and it's also been in the double figures, was euro -Aussie. And what we saw with Euro Aussie is that a lot of traders, and it's similar to what we saw with Aussie dollar. Again, traders were thinking, can't go any lower. It can't go any lower. With Euro Aussie, it was, it can't go any higher. Uh, they often, uh, and, and from talking to clients, I've been with FXCM well over, well over five years, been trading uh, for a decade. I, I, just talking to traders, they keep those old fundamental factors in their mind and use that to justify their current positions. So they're thinking, what about everything that's happening in Europe? It has to drop. It has to drop. It doesn't have to do anything. Uh, but when you get those extreme sentiment ratings, whereas here we've had, and I don't, I don't know the specific time. Uh, I, I, in my memory, it was, it was late April when it started going very heavily net short, euro Aussie. But same thing. So you saw it continue to build up. And so what we're looking at here is you're using some type of technical indicator 
which will help you find a high probability entry to time a long trade. Why would you be long? Well, not only, of course, would you be trading with the trend, but you have that clear SSI reading, and I think it was around a, a negative 12, and that you have multiple, multiple traders short for every one long. So as this thing breaks, breaks new highs, ladies and gentlemen, they unload their position, and this continues to move higher. Some other currency pairs that I want to show you. Dollar CAD, and again, anytime I have a vertical line on the chart, ladies and gentlemen, that's simply showing you when there was that shift, that very important shift. So here, traders went net short, and they stayed net short from about the 101.75 level up to the 105.60 level, so about 400 pips. And for those of you who are new to spot FX trading, uh, a pip most commonly is worth $10. Uh, so trading trading that size, you're looking at a 400 pip move. Well, that's a that's a $4,000 move against them. Uh, of course, you can adjust your trade size however you see fit. We always recommend you adjust your trade size according to your own account equity. But that's a major move if you held that against you. So that's just another showing of a very common currency pair in which sentiment was one-sided. And it would have done you a lot of good to fade the sentiment and trade with the trend. A few other currency pairs before we move on to the presentation. Dollar yen. This one picked the top almost perfectly. Unfortunate, but since it's something that we know plays out over and over again, it's something that we can use and take advantage of in our own personal trading, and that's what we're here to share with you. So here you see around the 103 level, traders switch to net long, and it dropped from 103, and it was around 103.85, I believe, or 103.75, down to a low of 93.80 before bouncing up off of that dollar strength. But essentially now, even though they're, they're still net long, so even being net long, we may have gotten stopped out here at a profit using SSI, but now we're looking for a re-entry. So whether it's a bounce off of the R1 using pivots, again, just another classic technical strategy, or we wait for MACD to turn over or RSI to come from above 70 back to below 70 to sell, we can use technical indicators to really fine tune and time our entry against the sentiment of the crowd. Hey Tyler, so uh, yes, I, I guess uh, here's an obvious question for you. Um, you guys post this information, is, isn't it part of what you post on the Daily FX site or am I wrong on that? You're absolutely right. It is available on Daily FX. We offer it uh, two times a day on okay. Daily FX Plus. Okay. So obviously, you're. I mean, it's in FXCM's best interest for its clients to be profitable and to keep trading and therefore generating more commissions. So you try to tell as many people as you can to use this, <laughs> yet we're still using it as a contrarian indicator. So I mean that. It isn't isn't that interesting? I mean, why why are people why are your own guys right that you're saying hey use this use this? They they don't use it because if they did, then it would no longer be contrarian, right? <laughs> I you know I, I agree with you completely, and I, I'm sure you've heard the story of you know the turtle traders with Michael Cavell, uh, it, it, the book he wrote, and and in talking about Richard Dennis and what he found was that you know he stated I could. Yeah. I, I know. To write my very successful trading strategy <laughs> on the front of the Wall Street Journal exactly. or Barron's, and people aren't going to use it. Yeah. So it's it's definitely one of those things that, and in fact, uh, if I go to the, uh, and it's a very good question, and the next slide was going to, you know, touch a little bit on that, but is the fact that, sadly, traders just want to do what feels good. They yeah. don't, they, and that's why I like that we have this crowd, the thinking traders, that, that are always trying to get better. Whereas you have a lot of traders who just want to do what feels good, and so they're going to try and buy low and sell high. So we do pitch this. We definitely do pitch this. Right. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, I think a lot of traders don't spend that time that the people in the crowd today are in trying to develop their strategy. It, re it reminds me of something that uh, one of the presenters said a few days ago in a, in a webinar. They said something to the uh, along the lines of, um, 
his uh, his first account uh, he blew out because he was never wrong, and it, it, it makes you think, right? <laughs> but that but that actually sums up how most people approach it, and it reinforces what you're saying that you know if it goes lower, they just buy more or or hold until they can't bear it anymore, and then that's that's usually when you see it uh, shift direction. Absolutely. Absolutely. Another way I'd heard it explained was if, if failure is not an option for you, neither is success. Uh, and and uh, the whole idea yep. there is that, you know, it's, it's those traders that keep on building onto a losing position uh, that, that often get hurt the most. And so that's, right. that's really kind of what we're playing off of is that they continue to add onto those losing positions like we saw with the Aussie dollar. Uh, and that's exactly right. You know, that one, that, as, as, that, uh, as that, uh, that host said, yeah, I was never wrong except maybe one time. And that was when my account blew out. Okay, so uh, all right, I think that we have some other questions, but probably we can wait until you're you're uh, through with the presentation to ask those. So go ahead. Okay, perfectly fine. Well, I, I will continue then. Uh, so uh, just just some details on the sample size. Uh, naturally, this scans all of our tradable servers for net positioning data. Of the actively traded accounts, there's about 78,000 plus retail traders. And we're adding naturally, you know, through our own business efforts, we're, we're adding new traders every month. Uh, but what you're doing essentially is you're, you're, you're seeing that 30,000 foot view of what that positioning looks like. So the sample size is about 78,000 actively traded accounts. Uh, you're, you're looking at everybody from, you know, uh, accounts I put as low as $300. It can be lower than that. You can have an account in FXC with $50. So you're just looking at a positioning basis. And you'll see down there below with the details, uh, it has nothing, it really doesn't have to do, or we don't skew the data to balances. Uh, it's one trader, one account number is one vote. Uh, so so essentially kind of what we're doing is we're looking at a lot of traders that either just want to buy low and sell high, even though that effectively doesn't work more often than not. It, it works once or twice, but oftentimes you've bled so much of your account equity, it's, uh, it's, it's not a sustainable strategy. Uh, but, but So you're looking at the entire range of our client base. The long to short ratio, again, is what we stated down below. It's equally weighted. So it is one trader equals one vote. So regardless of if one trader is short uh, 5K or 10K Euro USD and another trader is long a million, they've effectively netted out. Uh, and then we do offer historical data. So I know we have a lot of uh, Ninja Trader uh, users here. Uh, so we do, we do have a zip file in which you can look at over 43 months of historical data if you want to build your own strategy with this. Uh, so a uh, very, very helpful tool, but I did want us to state, um, you know, essentially what we're looking at is where does retail expect FX to go? We want to fade that, um, and, and, and what we've talked about so far is why. Uh, next, I want to show you what are some of the most favorable markets to trade this in. Uh, as you can tell, naturally, we want to look for trends or new highs or new lows when that sentiment continues to get overwhelmingly against the current trend. So you see there I state that volatile markets are where retail traders perform worse. In fact, we did a study of over 12 million live clients. So this was a few years back. And essentially we wanted to answer the question, what separated the successful traders from the unsuccessful traders? Uh, I'll, I'll give you, I'll show you how you can get that report later for free. Uh, but one of the key things we looked at is that traders by and far were most successful during kind of the most boring times of day, uh, which is often seen as uh, trading European currencies like the euro or the British pound or the Swiss franc uh, or even the U.S. dollar or the Canadian dollar during the Asian session. Essentially, it's a very, very strong range bound. There's, there's, there's no volume there to really push new highs or new lows. Uh, so all that to say, the important thing when looking at SSI is it's those key points in the market when volatility is high and we're hitting new levels or levels not seen in a long time, that's where we can find that SSI edge and apply that to our trading. So there's different things you can look at for finding volatile markets. Uh, naturally, we talked about over-the-counter FX option prices from Bloomberg or 
we haven't talked about that yet, but that's one way you can get it if you have access to that data. Uh, the the kind of easy way to do it is to just throw on an average true range, an ATR, and just find out historically uh, ATR compared to current ATR. So if you have ATR higher than it historically is, I know often we look at the 14-day ATR versus the 200-day ATR. Uh, it, you know, that's one way to do it. Obviously, you can also just look at a chart and just see if, if you're seeing price move faster now than it has in the past. But i.e., what you really want to look for is big moves around around very important price points. And we also have a volatility report that's available on dailyfx.com. That's our free research site, um, and I can post that towards the end of the session as well uh, because that, that's, that volatility report or the weekly strategy report is helpful as well because we very easily state, okay, with this currency pair, we're looking for trends. For this currency pair, we're looking for range based on what's happening. Uh, when you're trading ranges, I think it works well if you have a nice sized range and you have a range extreme, so naturally you're trading, you're right at the ceiling of the range. And if sentiment is high, meaning that all of a sudden traders are now thinking, all right, we're at the top of at the range, but they're, they're looking for a breakout, so they're overloaded to the buy side, well, that's when you want to look for a sell signal. You want to look for something of your technical toolkit to enter a sell. Or the other, of course, range extreme is near support. So price prices at the floor of the range, traders are looking for a breakout or the SSI is showing us a heavily negative number like we saw with the Euro or with the Euro Aussie heavily negative number then you want to find a buy signal from your technical toolkit as well so ranges can fare well if you're trading at ra you're trading range extremes but we often see this perform best and our automated trading strategies perform best in those highly volatile markets Another note here uh, is that we do definitely look at the CFDs as well, and, and CFDs is a fancy way uh, of saying contract for difference. Essentially, our non-U.S. traders have access to trade gold, silver, a um, ton of indices, uh, whether it's the Nikkei, the U.S. 30, the SPX, uh, or the SP 500, uh, the DAX, all of those. So again, we're just we're scanning our servers. We're trying to find out, okay, where is there an overloading? to one side or the other, and that gives us our directional bias. So just to kind of echo that, some of the things we've stated so far, SSI strategies, naturally you can combine breakouts with SSI extremes. Earlier you saw I had daunting channels on, and that's just, a, that's just a key breakout tool. That's something that we use. Uh, a shorter term trade strategy is using daunting channels with a 24 setting. And if you're not familiar with daunting channels, let me just pull it up real quick. This is what I had on gold. This is a daily chart with 55 period daunting channels. Quite simply, ladies and gentlemen, it's just framing price action and it's showing you uh, the lowest low and the highest high over the last 55 periods. But a very short term strategy if you wanted, you could look for daily breakouts. So you could have an hourly chart with a 24 period dodging channel. And naturally there, you're looking for an imbalance with the SSI and a breakout, a daily breakout on the price chart. So if I applied that, I'm just going to use the currency pair du jour, which is the Aussie dollar. You see it closed near the lows, but if we had a short term chart, And this is using the trading station two with FXCM, but naturally you're you're looking for a sell signal and a sell signal only because of how positive the SSI is, i.e. the traders are trying to buy the bottom and are failing miserably. But so just going back for this month, this is just essentially using hourly charts. You have a breakout to the downside and get stopped out at the top of the Donchi channel. Another breakout to the downside here, get stopped out at the top of the Donchi channel. Breakout here. And you can just rinse, wash, and repeat. And that can be a very effective strategy when you have a downtrend of this nature. And the SSI is so extreme. If you want to use pivots, something I had there uh, is 
the, and this is just the way I trade. If I if I am finding essentially, in fact, I believe I have this right here with the. There it was, yeah, just the Euro Swiss. So uh, here with Euro Swiss, there's an extreme rating right now, 5.46, so 85% of traders are long. So essentially here, I just have I have weekly pivots on a four-hour chart. So essentially once it hit that high of that R1 level and then and turn back over, that's a sell signal. So essentially, again, just looking for that key point when price essentially is overbought and the retail traders are celebrating for a short moment and then it turns back over again. That's when you're looking to enter in the direction of that trade. And you see once it hit that R1 and then turned back over, it was a pretty heavy move back down. And we expect that to continue further to the downside. Uh, for what it's worth and, and something that I did have on the screen, if, if you'd like to use pivots or you want to know more about using pivots, uh, what I, how I use them, I like to use larger period pivots for whatever time frame I'm, I'm trading. So if it's a multi-hour time frame, like four hour or two hour, I'll use weekly pivots. If I have a daily chart up, uh, then I'll use monthly pivots. Okay, and, and this goes back to one of the concepts we talked about earlier in that SSI is the thinking traders indicator. And, and what's nice about it is naturally there are very, very few, if any, some would argue, uh, effective leading indicators. And naturally we do feel that SSI is a true leading indicator. Uh, so this is just showing essentially, and let me pull up the chart here because that's what I have right there. Here is Aussie USD and something that we've looked at earlier, but this is just two technical signals set up with the fact that past this line, we are net long, so we're looking for short trades. So we have a breakout to the downside. This is four hour chart with 55 period Donson channels, which is a common strategy. Or you can take MACD crossovers to the downside to sell. And you see right here, I just, I just state that it's essentially a forward-looking indicator because we're looking for that time when that boat is just about to tip because it's, the positioning is so extreme. So as you can see here, I, I wrote that SSI you know, really has been ranging as high as positive seven. So seven traders were long for every one short as this thing continued to break new lows for 2013. So as traders continue loading into that position on the long side, trying to buy that bottom, you, the informed trader, because you know how to use SSI and you understand, sadly, how poor retail traders are or new undercapitalized traders are at this game, can fade that and see that, okay, the, the positioning is so extreme to the long side on Aussie dollar or Euro Swiss or dollar Swiss, that we're going to look for that time that they're crying uncle, they have to get out. We essentially want to get out right then, or we want to get in right then, in the sense that we want to take the breakout to the downside, which is more than likely where a lot of people have their stops. And that's where the market falls out. So that's the key thing right there. You see per SSI, traders should be looking for short entries with Donchi channels or their preferred indicator, forward looking with the SSI. So, uh, so we do have a strategy report. Sorry, Tyler. Yes. I, I, I wanted to ask one more yeah, really, really uh, difficult uh, question here and put you on the spot. So <clears throat> you, you stated earlier that it's a one-to-one -one vote, whether it's $50 or $5 million. So why not i have a feeling fxcm ran the numbers using you know the the actual amount uh, position size does the math not work as well or is there like a legal reason you can't or wh why would you why would you keep it one to one vote regardless of size when it seems like size would would be a more accurate representation do you say that in the sense that the smallest positions would be the the least successful well, yeah, I think that's one thing, but also uh, as far as the actual effect on, you know, the market, um, 
I, I guess I would I, just to me it just makes more sense to look at it weighted in terms of the actual size. So if we have, you know, a uh, hundred thousand contracts or whatever long versus short instead of number of traders. Very good question, and and I would say that. Uh, and, and I think that would be an effective tool. I think the reason, uh, Mike, that, that, that we continue to, kept it, continue to keep it as is is because if there's a mass crowd psychology and that more and more and more traders, small, large, or indifferent, are getting long Aussie yen as it continues to drop or Aussie dollar, that's something that's very valuable to us. So I think, I think rate size would be valuable, but I think we, we see a lot more value in just seeing the overall mass psychology. Right. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know what uh, legally you can or cannot do. I, I know that if I worked at FXCM and I was legally allowed to run some reports, man, I would have a lot of fun because uh, I could, I could <laughs> think sure. of a whole bunch of reports to run. You know, one, one, for example, would just be to distinguish between long-term profitable and, and not accounts and see how they differ, you know, with this sentiment, for example. So, I, have, I mean, I'm sure that you guys have probably thought of all this um, before and you have your reasons. I was just wondering. And I think another key point, and I, I appreciate that question very much. I think another key thing is when we looked at the, the, that report I mentioned earlier, which well, we actually looked at the data to compile the report, but the traits of successful traders, we looked at over 12 million live trades. We also did look at, okay, so accounts with 1,000 or less in their account, how successful were they? Naturally, right. they were our least successful. They were the most over leveraged. But right. even the traders with the most amount of money, they, they, still, they still did not have a greater than 50% success rate. They were, they were far greater, far greater. Um, they, were, they were, I think, around... 46 or 48, the, the, the specific numbers are in that report. Uh, but all that to say, uh, that's, that to us is why that mass psychology is so important. Right, okay. So, and Sam is making a comment here that, you know, that makes sense to me and I agree with that if, if you found, it doesn't, even if they're only betting $10, um, if they're consistently wrong, then that's really all that matters. I mean, as far as Absolutely. benefiting from it, <laughs> right, not, not 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 good for them. From but, your point of point, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks, Tyler. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so every every week, we actually draw up this strategy report, and naturally, what we want to show you is the volatility. And when we're saying volatility, essentially, we're just we're just giving you the percentile in the sense of uh, this is telling us the high volatility levels in relation to the past 90 days of trading because naturally, uh, you know, against the quote-unquote random walk theory, we found that volatility begets volatility. Uh, so since essentially they'll stay high for a long period of time or they'll stay low for extended periods of time. And when there is that high level of volatility, we want to take advantage of that. Uh, and this is, this is a free report for everybody. Now, at the end of the session, I'll, I'll make sure everybody has a link uh, for this. So they can either subscribe to the report. And again, it's free. It's on our, it's on our free page on dailyfx.com. Uh, naturally, the trend will just show you essentially trend intensity by telling you where price stands in relation to its 90-day trading range. And, and that's, again, what I think baffles that brand new trader that we want to benefit off of is the sense that new traders are thinking, you know what? If Kiwi dollar right here is at its lowest point in the last 90 days or near its lowest point, well, then we should be buying that. Whereas naturally, as you can imagine, we're looking for breakouts to the downside if SSI is positive. And, and SSI is positive. It's, it's not by much, though. There's definitely, I think, better trades out there than uh, New Zealand dollar, U.S. dollar. But so all that to say, that's what we're looking at. Um, and you can see a lot of these right now. Uh, the summer end, is ending with, the, or I should say, the summer is, is beginning with a bang. Uh, in the sense that you see the volatility percentage over the last 90 days, we're at the highest we've been on quite a few pairs. In fact, you see EuroCAD, uh, DollarCAD. This was this was a little bit earlier in the week, uh, but had hit the highest in volatility. Uh, this is simply going to show you the strategy bias we have. Breakout naturally is going to really focus on the volatility. So anytime you see a high volatility percentile, roughly over 70, we're going to be fo we're going to be focusing on those breakouts. Last week is just to show you if that volatility is continuing, uh, is continuing, or if there is a shift, which can obviously be helpful as well. And then we do have automated trading strategies, 
which for FXCM clients, it, it is free to use uh, the automated trading strategies that use SSI. So we have strategies like uh, Momentum 2 or Breakout 2, and they, they are looking at shifts in sentiment as breakouts occur. And essentially they have different, the, the difference between them are going to be position sizing, scaling in, and scaling out. Uh, so we do have that, that strategy report. If you're somebody who's stepping into the spot FX market, you understand from my presentation that because as a whole traders aren't successful, uh, that, that we came up with this tool. And so if you're looking for ways to, to benefit from that, naturally the whole data of this presentation really is meant to say you can use the SSI to help benefit you and not make the same mistake that the mass majority makes. And you find a technical tool that's going to help you time your entry in the direction of the trend, which more often than not is against the crowd. So here you see uh, this is just one way, and it's at no extra cost. But this is one way you can automate an SSI strategy from Daily FX. So uh, this is through a platform of ours called Mirror Trader. It's at no cost to any of our clients. Uh, so uh, mainly, I just wanted to share this with you to let you know if this is something that you buy into this idea, you understand that a majority of traders lose, but you want to take advantage of that because you're not into donating money to the market. You're here to grow your, your trading account. Well, this is a way to, to kind of see some of these trades play out live, either by automating them, placing this on a demo account, or looking when the strategies come up. And then naturally, as you can imagine, we're also showing this on daily FX and daily FX plus when these trades are generated or when there is a signal based on a breakout and a sentiment extreme. Okay, so we've talked about identifying the market environment through the strategy report. We've talked about if you want, you can automate the strategy through our platform called Mirror Trader. It's actually a third party platform with Tradency, but our live clients can use it for free. So Earlier I mentioned that we do this on a two-day basis, uh, twice a day basis. Well, just so you know, it's free for all FXCM account holders. If you personally have no desire to be an FXCM account holder, sorry to hear that, but you can still get access to it. Um, it is $19.99 a month. You, you can see this is just the, the page for daily FX Plus there. Um, and if I can post uh, the link, all right, we can get it to you later, uh, but that's just the front page. You can kind of take a tour of it there, uh, but that's where we give you access and show you twice a day how the SSI is positioned, and it looks exactly like that report I showed you earlier. Uh, this is Daily FX Plus. Uh, this is what this is part of, or SSI, I should say, is part of the overall offering to FXCM clients. Uh, and, and so I state that to, to state as valuable as SSI is, there is more that comes with that $19.99 a month if, if you're on the fence with that. Uh, so definitely wanted to share that with you. Naturally, we do offer reports on dailyfxcm.com once a week regarding that. And, and we do write articles, and we, offer, we also have a real-time news feed uh, in which we talk about SSI. But to get, I think, the most effective data for your own trading, I think the Daily FX Plus access, and again, it's completely free for FXCM Live clients, which truth be told, uh, you can have a live account with FXCM for I think, you know, $50 or a couple hundred dollars. So if, if you just want to try it out but you don't want to pay the fee, that's one way to do it. Um, or just our everyday FXCM clients naturally have full access to it as well. Uh, but you see here we have the trading signals, which base, these are based on SSI. Most of them are. Uh, we have a specific technical analyzer and then SSI, and that's the reports that you were seeing earlier. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so here is the sentiment in summary. So basically, if I could, if I could tell a brand new trader or somebody who wants to talk to somebody at FXCM that, that, that kind of can peek on the inside and and, and see the forest for the trees or, or see the mistakes that others have made and the successes that others have had. I, I would say very simply, want what the market wants, not what the average trader wants. The average trader wants to buy the bottom and sell the top. And one, one thing that I've, I've enjoyed hearing is that the only person that buys the bottom and sells the top consistently is, is liars because uh, essentially that, that just doesn't happen. So find a well-defined trend. 
and trade in the direction of that trend. That's the idea of wanting what the market wants. And the idea of not wanting what the average trader wants is, is fading that. And that's why sentiment, I think, is such a valuable guide. Now, earlier I mentioned the Traits of Successful Trader Guide. Uh, it's, it's absolutely free to get that. Uh, there's a link to, to register for that report. And I say register because it comes to you as a PDF. Uh, so, and that just gets sent to you. Uh, but there's the guide for that. I think combined with that, that's, that can be very helpful. And, and some of the topics we talk about in the Traits of Successful tra Trader Guide, uh, quite simply, is what is the number one mistake that, that Forex traders make? And that, that kind of is combined in what we talked about. Not only are they trying to uh, buy low and sell high or, or fade the trend, but often what we see, and this fits perfectly into our discussion today, is that they risk, on average, twice as much as they're looking to make. So when we ran the reports, we found that our traders were, on average, closing out more profitable trades than losing trades which if you look at it from face value, that, that sounds great if they're closing out 60% winning trades. But when the 40% of their losing trades are costing them twice as much as their winning trades, well, naturally, on a long enough timeline, that's a recipe for disaster, and one absolutely that we want you to avoid. Uh, and, and a big part of that is because, emotionally speaking, they don't want to close out that loss. Uh, one thing I heard from, from Jack Schwager is, you know, he, he had mentioned that, uh, from talking to market wizards and other traders that the, the rallying cry of the losing trader or the trader with no hope is that I'll close out this trade when I break even. Uh, and, and I hope you never say that. I don't say that to discourage you. I say that to encourage you that if you can quickly discern when that trade idea is no longer a good trading idea, get out of it as quick as possible, and then hold on to those trades in the direction of the trend uh, by fading the retail crowd, I think that can often help quite a bit. Uh, but that's why we talk about sentiment acting as a leading indicator, uh, is because you define that trend, you see that the majority are fading the trend, and then as they have to give up that trade, uh, and essentially we're using that monster sample size of, of 78,000 uh, clients, then, then chances are that's when it's, the trend's going to continue. You can stay in that trend as opposed to exiting early. Uh, and, then, and then lastly, as I state there, before we get on to open Q&A, this combines greatly with traditional technical analysis. We, we, we don't mean this to be a one-off tool. Because as you can see from those reports, this is really just giving you positioning data. So this is just telling you, okay, as of this morning, four traders were long for every one short the Australian dollar. So that, that helps you know, okay, if that's the case, then I want to be looking for times to sell the Australian dollar because if this thing breaks new lows, they're going to have to get out of that trade. And as they get out of that trade, it's going to cause an avalanche effect. And I want to be in on that avalanche effect in the direction of the avalanche. Uh, but definitely find the traditional technical analysis that works best for you, whether that's pivot points, breakout tradings with daunting channels, or oscillators. I had MACD up earlier. You can use RSI, but naturally, there's a ton of great tools uh, that, that you can use to combine with SSI. And that's one thing that I really like about it is that it's not a either-or indicator. Uh, it really is a both-and in the sense that this is something that can just really give some extra juice to your trading. All right. So uh, before before we get on to the prizes, wanted to open it up for any questions that any of you had. Sure. And thank you again very much for letting me be with you this Friday afternoon. Yeah, thanks, Tyler. All right, guys, so uh, I see a few questions here. If anybody else has questions, now is the time to ask before we give away the prizes. All right, so let me back up uh, a few slides here. Um, futures operator was, was asking, I forget exactly which, uh, which instrument it was, but how you came up with a, a, a reading of 1.97 to equal 66 so I guess the math is a little tricky. And then later, you know, the uh, I saw one that was a ratio of five something for eighty-five percent. So you might want to just briefly explain the math on that. Yeah, sure. So so essentially, uh, if if <laughs> two traders simple. are <laughs> well, if, if if two traders are long for every one short, then it, then and, and we're looking at the overall positioning naturally, because that's something very simple that we have access to. What is the aggregate positioning on our servers for dollar yen. Uh, so it's very easy for us to tell, okay, if we're looking at you know, two traders long essentially for every one short, and we look at the aggregate 
positioning size that we could say, okay, six, you know, of that, 66 traders, 66 percent, or you know, two thirds essentially, two thirds of the traders are long dollar yen. So it's, right. it's it's that same essential thing that we're taking our aggregate positioning from all servers and then applying that to to give you that percentage data right. exposure. Okay, uh, Kelly has several questions here, so let's take them one at a time. Um, do you match orders internally, or, or do you send all orders to uh, ECNs? Very good question, Kelly. We give you that option. Uh, and, and, and what I mean by that is when you set up an account with FXCM, you have the ability to say, uh, I, I want to trade on the FXCM no-dealing desk, which is where we offset with an ECN or liquidity provider. Uh, now, I, I, I state up front and, and make no qualms about it, we do recommend you trade with the no dealing desk execution in which it's offset externally. However, I'll tell you the spread is a little bit higher because we pay the liquidity provider and we pay, and we pay ourselves through the spread. So taking EURUSD as an example, with EURUSD, uh, the spread on the no dealing desk is about two and a half pips. The spread on the what we call internal execution or dealing desk in which we offset internally um, is about 1.8. Uh, so the spread is different. We offer you both. Uh, very good question. And we would just say, based on your own preference, we'd recommend you make the decision that's best for you. Okay. Uh, Kelly also asking if there are any plans uh, to add position size data for the total notional amount similar to the commitment of traders report? It's a very good idea. You know, I don't, it's nothing that I have heard that we're recommending, but that's something I think that would, I, I think it would be helpful to know. So definitely something that I appreciate the, uh, from both Mike, you and Kelly, uh, the recommendations. That's something we could take a look at, kind of back test it, see if it does play out. And if so, right. then as you can see, I mean, we're, we're really are happy to, to kind of open up the doors if we think it'll help our traders. Okay. And try and offer that. Uh, Kelly also asking, is FXCM a fixed or variable spread broker? On both types, we are variable spread. Uh, so from our no dealing desk, which is something you know we've championed for years now, we, we have 13 liquidity providers. And, and with that, you know we're always trying to find the best bid, the best ask. We're pitting those against each other uh, with, our, with our pricing engine. So all that to say, Definitely, we've we've historically had variable spreads, and then even when we added the uh, the dealing desk offering or the internal execution offering, we kept those variable spreads because same thing. I mean, even though we with the dealing desk we are offsetting internally. Excuse me, on the dealing desk we're offsetting internally. Um, we're still receiving that feed from the liquidity providers that we're taking a look at to kind of get our uh, our bias on, and if we can, we much prefer to offset internally, not with our own books, but with other traders. Right. Okay. Uh, do, you, do you guys publish a list anywhere of what of who those ECNs are, or is that internal, private? Before we were public, it was private, um, but on our on our um, annual report, now that we're a publicly traded company on the New York Stock Exchange, we, we have all of that data, and it's it's okay. all of the major investment banks you've heard of, you know, okay. whether it's uh, Goldman or Citi or you know J.P. Morgan. It's um, so all that to say, if you look at our annual report, it's all listed there. Okay, great. Let's see. Uh, Martin is asking: Is the assumption that the base that this base is representative? of the whole retail market, uh, surely, you know, even though FXCM is very large, it's still a small impact on the entire market. So I guess it goes back to what, what I was kind of saying earlier, that it, it, when I was asking for the dollar weights to be associated, but really, you know, you made the argument that if they're wrong, they're wrong. It doesn't matter how much size is behind them, right? In essence, yes, yeah. So, and in, in just kind of looking at statistics, we're just we're, we're taking the assumption that as one of the largest, you know, non-bank dealers, that we have one of the best sample sizes in the business uh, okay. to get to give us a very good reading of where is you know the average trader position-wise, and where are the average groups of traders, so that we can fade that right. that sentiment. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Martin also asking if, 
uh, the, the, the customers opt in or can they opt out of being included in this data if they, if they don't want to? It's a very good question. Uh, there is no ability to opt out of that data. Okay. So all, all traders, I mean, because we're, we're taking just a, a full screenshot of our servers uh, to give that information. Right. You're not revealing any, any private information about any single individual. Absolutely not. Uh, okay, this is a long question here. Let me see what we've got. LR asking, can you elaborate uh, why is it that some people shy away from spot FX? Uh, is there a belief that, that some FX brokers, okay, basically trade against them? So, you know, I, I'm sure you've got this before, so I'll just let you answer. You probably have a good answer ready. <laughs> you've got the question many times. <laughs> yeah, well, there, there is a lot of reasons that people are intimidated for trading the, the spot forex market. Um, it used to be known as kind of the wild west of financial markets and uh, definitely regulation over the years, definitely post 2008, uh, has, has minimized that as much as possible. Uh, the, the, the idea or the concept of stop hunting was one of the main reasons why in 2006 we kind of broke away from the pack and developed a no dealing desk so that you could, you could have that full confidence that your, your broker really is uh, behaving in your best interest. And what we mean by best interest is the sense that, and, and to, to credit and echo Kelly's question, you know, are you trading against us or, you know, do you guys have fixed spreads? Well, right. as you can imagine, nothing in the financial markets is fixed. Uh, and if it is, you should, you should run. Uh, right. <laughs> and, and what we meant by that, what we, what we mean by that is that if somebody's giving you kind of a, a fixed setup, then it's, it's kind of a trap. And, and so meaning that they can control essentially their own positioning in a favorable method for them before allowing you to get into the trade. Uh, so that's, right. that's why we developed the No Dealing Desk champion that uh, we, for, for many, many years uh, right. so that tr traders could feel comfortable with the Forex broker. And then just recently we offered a, uh, a Dealing Desk offering um, with the reduced spreads. But the, but the whole idea there is we were comfortable offering that after the credibility had been established, after we were a, a kind of fine running publicly traded foreign exchange broker. Um, so right. uh, I think I think that hopefully answers the question, but um, well, I if look you at have follow-up questions, I'd be happy to answer them too. Yeah. I mean, when, when uh, I contacted you guys a couple of years ago uh, and invited you guys to be a sponsor on, on the site, you know, I looked at a whole bunch of different firms, and I think that I guess when you read some posts on various forums, what you see a pattern of is some of these smaller – uh, brokerages, I see some really bad horror stories. Like, basically, it boils down to if people were successful and they made money on their account, then all of a sudden they're literally not able to withdraw their money. Uh, the broker, you know, gives them all kinds of runaround. So, you know, obviously with FXCM uh, publicly traded, the size of the company, you know, I I really feel like that's not that big of a risk uh, compared to, you know, some of these other guys. So I guess it just comes down to doing your research um, to make sure that, you know, you feel comfortable with whatever, whatever, whoever broker you, you choose. And, you know, the fact is, even in the futures world, that's so heavily regulated, we've seen some recent examples, unfortunately, of, of it just coming down to who you've chosen to be your broker as to whether or not your money is still going to be there tomorrow. Absolutely, yeah. I've I've heard horror stories as well that were kind of on that on that same tune, uh, and it is. I mean, you you hate to hear that uh, yeah. in a sense that offshore brokers, in which exactly as long as you're losing, they love your business. But as soon as you're winning, you try to withdraw money. It's yeah. you know it's it's a rough day. Um, and but yeah, I can uh, absolutely given giving our regulators on uh, just numerous continents, <laughs> you know the the day that we you know don't allow one withdrawal probably be our last day of business. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, absolutely recommend everybody do their own research, you know, talk to brokers, have your list of 20 questions. You know, if they, if they're frustrated with your questions, you walk away. Um, yeah, definitely. Right. Well, I, you know, I certainly feel comfortable with you guys or I wouldn't have uh, allowed you to be a sponsor. So I think that uh, everybody should to do their own research, but shouldn't be overly worried about the stability of FXCM. Okay. Let's see what other questions we've got. Uh, futures operator is asking about backtesting the SSI. So, 
you, I think you mentioned there was what almost four years of of data. So is this like data that's going to give me two two uh, prints or what whatever it is every single day? So two data points every single day on all the instruments for four years. Correct. Yeah. So we have. Um I want to say it's 47 months, or maybe you know here under there, but uh, but yeah. So it's gonna it's available in a zip file. It's available to to all our clients. We just send it out to you if you request it, um, and that's exactly right. So if you if you want to test it, and actually that's what we developed those strategies on that I shared with you earlier that can be automated, okay. uh, but is is all of those data points so that you can see okay where, when there's a turning point in the market. Uh, just so as an example, a lot of traders like to look at the 2008 crash. You know when when Lehman happened and, right. uh, and and we thought it was the end of the world. Well, naturally, the euro dollar plummeted from you know about 160 down to 120. Traders were net long the entire time. Uh, so it's things like that that traders like to use to, to back test their strategies with SSI. Okay, so is this? Do you guys have like a historical symbol that you could punch into a chart and download this data, or do you like download it once with the zip file and then how, how would I go about getting new data every single day? Is it API or what, what, what are my options to get new data? You, yeah, you can definitely use, uh, we do have an API offering um, for, for the back testing. So if you wanted a forward test, you can, you can set up an API for that, uh, for back testing the zip files, the easiest in them. Uh, we also have a, a programming department that can kind of walk you through uh, a lot of that testing as well, making sure you have the API set up properly. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Sam is asking about statistics on the speed and latency of the executions. So I, I guess, I mean, whenever you decide who to send or what, which ECN to send it to, it's based on the best price, right? So is there Correct. ever any consideration due to how long they may take to fill, or do they like, are they on the hook once they tell you it's going to be that price? That's, that's the end. How does, how does that work? Very good question. So there, there are the instances where you'll have um, like a hanging order, and essentially a hanging order is when, you know, because as you can imagine, it's, it's not somebody placing an order and then us calling up the bank and asking them if they can fill it. Right. They say they can fill it, then we're calling the trader and saying it's all good. So it's, it, it is all electronic. All that to say, um, you know, 99% of the time, it feels like it's instantaneous, even though it's all electrical electronically communicated back and forth. Every once in a while you will have those instances, uh, m maybe it's a major market move or a technological failure uh, in which there's what we call hanging orders and essentially that's when an order goes to be filled by the liquidity provider, meaning we posted that quote on our platform, it goes into execution and, and they never confirm, there, there's never confirmation from them. Uh, so all that to say, if that happens, uh, Usually we get a hanging order or it'll go to the, to the next available liquidity provider right away, which is usually a couple fractions of a pip. Uh, but one thing I, I must state uh, as a trader myself and somebody with FXCM is that if anything, ever think, if anything like that ever happens to you, excuse me, please do call in. Uh, we have a full audit department that wants to make sure you're confident with the execution here at FXCM. And if we have to recompensate you for any technological failures, whether it's our issue or the liquidity provider's issue, that's something that we'll, you know, we'll do our best to recompensate you on. Okay. Uh, Kelly asking, how many non-bank dealers remain open to U.S. clients after Dodd-Frank? Do you know? A lot less uh, in the sense that, I mean, it, it seems like in my, in my mind, um, there's about five, I want to say. Um, you know, with uh, Forex, FXDT, uh, Forex.com or Gain Capital, FXDT, um, TradeStation took over IBFX, and, you know, but, um, I, and I know I'm missing one, um, but it doesn't seem like there's that many in the sense that a lot of them were finding it unprofitable to do business in, uh, in the United States. The capital requirements were much higher, um, and I, I can absolutely tell you, um, you know, we're a publicly traded company. Anybody listening on this call can, can view our annual reports, but by and far, a majority of our revenue comes from outside of the United States, uh, right. just because it is it is it is not as friendly, I should say, um, regarding the the, the requirements, uh, the capital requirements for the brokers to do business here. So you had, like I said, you had GFT earlier this year uh, drop their operations, and, and some other brokers follow suit. So, fortunately, Kelly, not as many as as there once was. Um, but you're always welcome to you know call into our financial service reps and ask any questions. Um, you know, to see if we're right. fit for you. I, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but I, I know that uh, after post PFG, there was there was an active guy within FXCM 
within his department or whatever that was, uh, uh, you know, lobbying the CFTC and the NFA for more strict reporting. So FXCM was, you know, encouraging what they already do, I, I, I guess, to become more of a standard, more transparency for the Forex side. So I've, I've seen uh, FXCM do that a lot, and I think that's good. Yeah, we often we often ask clients if if the client will tell us that they have accounts at other brokers or things like that, um, you know, or, or even if they don't, we we tell them to you know contact the CFTC and ask. We a ask them to in, increase the transparency, not necessarily the regulation, but the transparency. Sure. <laughs> um, and then and then also you know to to be you know very blunt with the questions that if they have an account in another broker, ask them about you know how much how much free capital do they have on hand. I, I think. Uh, you know so, some other some other brokers in the United States, and and this isn't a, a name calling competition, so I'm not even going to name them. But um, essentially, got fined for having low capital require or, or below the capital requirements on uh, right. required. So all that to say, um, definitely whoever you talk to, if you call all U.S. brokers, which is perfectly fine by us, you know, ask them about their financials and how how far above the cap requirement they they are sitting on, because that's important as well. Uh, let's see, LR asking what type of leverage you guys allow. Is it 10 to 1, 50 to 1, 100 to 1? Uh, I'm not sure where LR is uh, located, but in the United States, the, the max leverage is 50 to 1. We prefer it to state, uh, we prefer to state 2% margin requirements, uh, meaning that if you had a $10,000 account, uh, you could open up a 10,000 unit position and effectively, you're not using the leverage because you have a 10,000 unit position on a $10,000 account. But of that $10,000 position, we're only going to require about $200 in margin. So that's the you know that's the 2% margin. So uh, effectively, it's 50% leverage on 2% margin. Uh, but outside of the United States, it can be 100 to 1 or 200 to 1. Uh, I think Canada is a little bit less due to their regulations. So it depends LR on where you're located. Uh, but on average, it's about it's about the uh, 50 to 1. And we should also mention that the the people that that want the highest leverage are also the ones that lose the most money. Yeah, those are the ones you want to make sure their data is on SSI. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Kelly's asking, do you know when FXCM went public? Yeah, yeah, uh, it was December third, two thousand ten. Um, so we were the first uh, broker in the United States uh, on the retail forex side uh, to be a publicly traded firm. Okay. And uh, Futures Operator asking about rollover, and I think that's gold. Is that XAU dollar? Is that gold? Which one is that? Yes, yeah, okay. XAU USD is gold. So how, how does rollover work on something like that? Uh, you know, I, in, in fact, I'm pulling it up on my screen right now. I'm not sure if you can see. Um, there is a there is a small amount of rollover uh, since it's the weekend the price speed actually went off um, we don't have it but it's it's very it's very minimal compared to very minimal compared to actual currencies where if you have something like the Australian dollar that has a you know has a bigger interest rate di differential um, unfortunately I don't have a specific answer but however you're welcome to email me next week when the price feeds back on I can give you the right. specific numbers if you'd like okay. So let's let's do one final question. Kelly's asking, and I think you already answered this, but I'll give you one more shot at answering, and then we'll move on to the prizes. Uh, asking, does FXCM trade against customers? So if you have the dealing desk execution model, if we cannot find internally another client to offset your trade on, we will be on the other side of the trade. So that that is that unfortunate moment where. Um, you know your your losses are our gains, and unfortunate for us when you, when your your wins are our our losses. So uh, definitely, if you're uncomfortable with that, we'd recommend trading on the no dealing desk execution. Again, the the trade off there is that the dealing desk does have a you know a couple fractions of a pip cheaper spread. Um, but if if that's something that you're just understandably um, right. you know bent on not not having a, a broker. Uh, with a conflict of interest with you, then it's right. best to trade with the no dealing desk execution. Right. So, yeah. Okay. So the way I understand it is the ECNs are charging you f money for their liquidity. So there's that's a small part of the spread, and then the other part is that's how FXCM is making their money is is uh, whatever it is on the spread, right? Exactly. On the, on the non dealing desk, right? Okay. On the non dealing desk, right? So on the dealing desk, we naturally we take out that fee from the 
from the ECN, and that's why that spread is cheaper. Right. Okay. All right. So let's do the prizes. And uh, so Tyler, I also want to say real quick that I really appreciate putting together this presentation for us and uh, answering all these questions. And we're, we threw some uh, some uh, curveballs at you, so I'm I'm happy to, <laughs> that you answered all of them. <laughs> I knew I knew that you would. I never never doubted it. All right, so what do we have? We have, what, four prizes in total. It's, what, two Nexus 7 tablets and two autographed copies of Sentiment in the Forex Market by Jamie uh, Satili. Did I get that right? <laughs> Jamie Satel, yeah. He's, our, he's uh, <laughs> one of our chief strategists. Perfectly fine. Okay. Uh, I'm over two on that. Sorry. So, yeah, so he, <laughs> so he works uh, for FXCM, right? Correct, correct. And um, Mike, just to confirm with you, so I'm going to post, I have four questions, and just so everybody knows, uh, in fact, let me, let me go ahead and put this in briefly, if you don't mind. Um, these, are, these prizes, of course, are all free, but I do need to just post the terms and conditions uh, via that link, so if you guys will just take a quick link, uh, look at that, and then you can also take a look at the screen. We have two prizes, um, and the, the prizes are uh, the Nexus 7 from Google. It's a great tablet. Um, and we also have two signed copies of Sentiment in the Forex Market, which I think is a, a very valuable gift um, signed by Jamie uh, and will really kind of help you uh, own the concepts that we talk about today. And Mike, if you'll please correct me, uh, we're doing four questions. So the first question, I believe the first correct answer gets the prize. Right. The second question, the second correct answer gets the prize. Right. And then they will just communicate with you their contact information. Is that correct? And then we'll yeah, so, send them the prizes. Right. So I'm going to ask the winners for their BMT username. So guys have that handy. And then when the webinar is done, I'll get a hold of you and get your contact info so we can get the prizes to you. And uh, Tyler, are you, I don't think I have the answers. I don't, I don't think that you guys sent them to me. I don't know if you did. Um, so are you able to see the, uh, yeah, the questions panel up so that you can help me locate the answers? I absolutely, yes, I, I absolutely okay. do. Let me, Make sure. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go now to the first question. Uh, so, and again, this is this is these are all questions that were uh, covered in today's session uh, quite fully. Uh, it's, so it's one one winner per webinar. So, are we doing the book or the tablet first? Okay, so the first question is going to be the tablet. Excuse me. The the second and third question will be the book, and then the last question will be the tablet. Okay. All right, so uh, let me go ahead and post the first question. And that question is, what does the speculative sentiment index tell the informed trader? And you are the informed trader. So what does the speculative sentiment index tell you? Okay, so we're looking for the first correct answer. And just let me know when you see it there. All right, sorry, it's just uh, it's just popping up right now. Um, so I have, and, and so do I go ahead and, and mention who the asker was with the first yeah. correct answer? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, so it's going to be Jeff Hager who had the correct answer of ratio of retail traders that are long versus short. So that's the positioning data there. So congratulations, Jeff. Okay. And Jeff, I need your um, username. Oh, there it is. You're ready for me. All right. <laughs> he wants that tablet. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Congratulations on that. Okay, so number two for the book, right? And we're looking for the second correct answer. Second correct answer. So that's going to be how does the SSI offer more information than commitment of traders? Okay, so I have Sharon Lee as the correct answer for okay. this, stating that it is every day versus once per week on Tuesday. Whoops, excuse me, I posted the fourth question, sorry. All right, uh, so Sharon. That's, that's, the, that's the correct one for Sharon. Okay, I need your username, please. All right, great. So now number three, it's also a book, right? And we're looking for the third correct answer.
Well, Tyler, I think we lost audio. I didn't hear you ask the question, but we oh, got I'm it on sorry. the screen. I'm sorry. Let me... <laughs> That's all right. Where you, where you got the answers? People just read it. So. <laughs> okay, perfect. Uh, so for that, all right. I have Kelly Pinkham as the third correct answer with five times as many retail traders are short as long. So that is a buy signal. Okay. Good job, Kelly. And I need your username, please. And give me just one second for that before we go to the last question. No problem. Question. Okay. So now question four for the tablet. I'm looking for the fourth right answer, right? Correct. And Kelly, congratulations on that. So for the Google Nexus tablet, the last question is, what major currency pair has had the clearest SSI reading as, as described in today's presentation? They're coming in fast, but the... <laughs> I have Charles Me as the fourth... Okay. I'm sorry, excuse me, I'm sorry, excuse me, Frank Smith, please excuse me. Uh, I didn't read Frank's answer correctly, but U.S. Odd, how's the U.S.D.? Uh, so Frank Smith. All right. That's so the correct answer. Congratulations, Frank. Yeah, I need your username, please. Okay. All right, so great job, guys, on winning those prizes. I'll get in touch with you here in just a few minutes once the webinar is over. And, Tyler, I want to appreciate your time once again for a presentation in the Q&A and, of course, for FXCM to give these prizes away to everybody. I also want to remind everybody that I will post a recording of this webinar on YouTube sometime tomorrow, so check it out. And if you have any more questions, Tyler has made himself available right there as his email address. And you can also uh, find FXCM at FXCM.com and then DailyFX.com. Anything else, Tyler? Uh, I would just say if you're about to go on vacation, be on vacation, don't trade. <laughs> uh, if, if you're one of those that uh, won, congratulations. I hope you enjoy those gifts. Thank you very much for everybody, your time here. Uh, Mike, thank you very much for, for inviting us. We're a pleasure to be, uh, we're very pleased to be a sponsor on your forum. Thanks, Tyler, and I'll see you back in a couple months. Thanks, guys. Wonderful. Talk to you soon. Bye, everybody.